This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. Continuing on with the last video in the series where we actually just kind of showcased what we want to eventually build in this series of videos. And the main building block that we're gonna be using for this script that we're going to be writing is the YouTube data API. So this is just kind of a product from Google and YouTube that provides a direct uh, access, API access to the data that's stored on the YouTube platform. So Google built this product that just allows us to kind of make queries to their platform, to their API, and we can extract uh, certain pieces of information, you know, given some, let's say, URL for a YouTube video. So we can make use of this API to say, hey, given this URL or this ID that corresponds to a given video on your platform, you know, what's the title, what's the description, and we're going to be using that to um, interface with to extract precisely the content that we saw in the uh, previous video where we actually downloaded that content. So this is kind of the documentation for the YouTube data API. If you're not familiar with it, if you haven't seen this before, or if you want to see more information about what this API can provide to you, I encourage you to check out the documentation. This is something that also changes over time. So uh, depending on when you watch this video, this may be, you know, more or less relevant. So I encourage you to, you know, check whether or not any of this is even relevant anymore. Or if there's any part of the uh, queries that we're going to form that are going to be uh, having to be updated based on the code that you're going to write, hopefully it'll be somewhat consistent. Um, of course, I guess it depends on how far in the future you watch this. Anyway, so more information on precisely what you can do with this API, I'll leave it there. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to uh, console.developers.google.com. I'll also leave a link to this in the description as well. So what we're going to be doing here is we're actually going to be creating an application. And in order to do that, you need to have a Gmail account or a Google account. And you need to go to this website and kind of sign up. And uh, the sign up process is not anything unique or interesting so I just kind of assume that you can you know put in your email and password and things like that so uh, so long as you can do all those things then you should be able to go to this website and create an application so I'm going to assume that you've done that and if you've done that then what you can do is you can create an application using Google API so if you just go to the home page what we can do is we can check out this drop down menu here and we can actually create a project um, that we want to um, essentially serve as the kind of intermediary between the API, the YouTube API, and our Python project. So let's just go ahead and call this python-youtube. Actually, that's searching, so I'm going to cancel that. Uh, go back here and then say new project. So let's call this python-youtube dash tutorial, something like that. You can call it whatever you like, of course, but I'm just going to call it that. I'm going to say create. So this is just going to create a project in my uh, developers console. It takes a couple seconds to do that, not very long at all. Once we've created this project, we can go and actually enable certain APIs. So we see that the project has been created. I'm going to click on that, which is going to enable the focus of the project to that one that we just created. Uh, this is kind of the overview of the project. It kind of tells you what requests for any given API this uh, application is tied to, some of the resources it's using, any error reporting, very comprehensive um, overview of what this project is going to give to you. So the next thing we want to do is enable the YouTube data API for our project. And we also want to get an API key that's going to allow us to um, interface with this. So if you go to, uh, I think it's just click on the top left corner and then go to enable APIs and services. So if you do that, we can search in this search bar here for the API that we want to enable. And if you're not familiar, there's all sorts of things that you can actually interface with. I have a series on interfacing with the Google Sheets API. Uh, you, I, I think it's also on the Google Drive API as well. For this one, we're just going to restrict our attention to the YouTube data API, which I actually see right here. Uh, if you don't see what you're looking for, you can also type it in. So if I just type in YouTube, uh, that pops up right there. The one that we want to use is YouTube data API in this case, version three. Again, depending on when you watch this, it might be different. Then for our project, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this API enabled. So I'm gonna click on that enable button. It's gonna go ahead and enable the service for our application that we've created. So once it's done that, it's going to tie in that use of the API for our project. And the next thing we want to do is we want to actually create credentials so that way we can actually uh, talk to this API from our Python code. So if you go on this left side here, you can click on the credentials item. And what we can do is we can actually create an API, uh, API key. So let's go ahead and click on create credentials on here, API key. 
and it's going to create for us an API key that's just randomly generated. We're going to take this API key, we're going to copy it, and then we're going to use this for queries that we make into the YouTube Data API. So just copy this and let's go over to our code, go ahead and go to my terminal and pop open a Python file that we'll create right now. I'm just going to call this python underscore YouTube underscore downloader dot pi. It's going to pop that file open and then I'm just going to paste into it that API key that we uh, created from the YouTube data uh, console. So I'm just going to go ahead and comment that out. We're going to use that later to form our uh, URL that's going to be used to actually fetch the JSON data for whatever query we happen to want to form. Uh, we're going to actually, instead of commenting that out, let's go ahead and create a variable called API underscore key and we'll set this equal to this, making it a string in Python. So let's we'll wrap that in quotes. At the top of the file here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and import a few things that we'll need for this video. One is JSON, so this comes standard with Python. It's going to allow us to process uh, JSON content. This is the general format in which the content that we get from the YouTube Data API is formatted in. So having a way in which we can interpret that in Python is going to be helpful to us. We'll also import RE. RE is the Python module for um, essentially form it, forming regular expressions that we're going to use that for processing some content that we extract from the web page and then we're also going to use the following library which is URL lib.request this is going to be responsible for actually making a request to a given uh, URL that we're going to form with the API key and some other credentials or, or criteria uh, by which we're going to make use of the API uh, and that's going to actually request that URL we'll see the way in which it's formatted and then we'll um, you know, we'll basically get the content that we need from there. The next thing that we're also going to uh, import that we that probably doesn't come standard or no, it doesn't come standard in Python that we'll need to install specifically is PyTube. So I'm going to say from PyTube import YouTube. So PyTube is a very nice package that's written. It's a third-party module that's written that allows you to give it a URL for a YouTube video. It allows you to just download a high-quality stream of that video. So. I'll leave a link to that GitHub project in, in the description of this video if you want to check it out, if you want to star it, if you want to go there and kind of give kudos to the author of that package, they would probably very much appreciate that. Um, all we need to do for this, we're going to kind of use base level functionality for this module, so we're not going to use it too terribly much in this, but we will um, you know, use it to download video. So in order for us to use that, we're going to need to install it. So I'm going to assume that you have pip installed on your machine what you need to do then is go to a terminal, type in pip install and then pytube. So pytube is the name of the package. I've already got it installed on my machine. It says requirement already satisfied. If you don't have it, it will install it in your machine and then you'll be good to go. API key in the script. What we're going to do is we're going to formulate essentially a query or a git request for the YouTube data API. And this is going to be formed in terms of a URL. So I'm just going to paste this in here as a variable specifically as a string and I've defined this variable called URL and in this URL variable I define it as a functional string the base URL of the query is this URL called googleapis.com slash youtube slash v3 slash videos the part that we actually want to gather from this query is following the question mark which is part equals snippet so part equals snippet is part of the component that I've acquired from the documentation of the YouTube data API and then on top of that, I'm going to add extra parameters that I want to specify this snippet from. So the snippet is going to be a query that's going to return a JSON formatted string. And if I separate extra parameters separated by these ampersands, this is going to specify further what information I want to get from this uh, video. So specifically, I want to get the information for the video with ID, video ID. This is a variable that I've yet to define. We're going to define a variable here as a string, which is going to be called video ID, which is going to be the last part of the URL of the YouTube video that we're trying to uh, gather statistics from. And then the other part of it, finally, the final component uh, put here by the final ampersand is the API key, and that's given by this key parameter. So key equals API key, which we actually have defined as a string up here, which again will be different for you based on uh, whatever you've generated for, for your own respective application. So what we're going to do is we're going to, let me create a new tab, which is going to be the uh, links of videos. The ID of the video is going to be this last component here. So this component here, let me just take this whole thing and just copy this. Go over here, 
paste that in here and the ID is going to be the last component of that. So I'm going to say video underscore ID is equal to this. I'm going to get rid of that comma too because each of these separated by a comma which is not part of the actual ID. So I define a variable which is a string which is the ID portion of the video. I've tagged that in this git request that we're formulating based on this URL. And let me actually just copy this and paste this into a browser so you can see that when I do that it's actually going to return to me some JSON formatted string. I'm going to go to a browser here. I'm going to create a new tab. I'm going to paste this in. Now you can see that there's a few things here that we need to replace with actual values, namely the video, video ID and the API key. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to copy this API key, this thing right here, copy that, go back to our browser, replace that with, oops, replace that with this key equals parameter. So I'm going to replace that with the actual API key and then finally with the video ID. So I'm going to take this between the quotes here, copy that go to the browser and then actually replace the video ID or the ID equals with the video ID. Now if I do this, I'll see that I'll get some JSON response, which is going to be uh, a number of things. These are the, this is essentially the JSON formatted response that we expect from the YouTube data API. So we can see that, you know, it gives us um, some information that we're after, like when was it published, the channel ID, so this is the channel ID from my channel, the title, which is what we're going to be eventually extracting from this, the overall description, which is what I'm highlighting here, and some other information that you might be interested in as well. So all of those components are going to be extracted from this Git request that we're formulating in terms of this URL. So we'll go back to this here. So this is the URL that we've uh, essentially concatenated all of these components together with and we're going to use the url lib dot request to actually request a browser to fetch the information here and then we're going to try to parse this as json and extract the components that we actually care about from this so let's go ahead and just do that and then we'll uh, figure out how we're going to go through and modularize this in further videos so let's just go ahead and construct a variable called json underscore url. This is equal to url lib dot request. And what we're going to put here is url dot open. And we're going to feed it in the url. So we fed it in this url that we've concocted from all of these different parameters for the git request. And what we're doing there is we're just navigating to that page. And we're saying, hey, go to that page, request this page for this particular URL. So it's going to store the contents of that page in this variable JSON underscore URL. And then what we want to do is we actually want to load in the JSON data uh, and actually treat it as JSON. So the way that we can do that is we can say data is equal to JSON dot loads and we can put in here uh, JSON underscore URL dot read. So this is going to read in the content of the website and it's going to load it in using the JSON module that we imported and it's going to store the result of that which is a uh, stored in the data variable and it's going to be treated as a dictionary which is a JSON object so the way in which JSON is formatted naturally amends itself to the way in which a dictionary uh, is, is, is structured in Python so it's going to store that in the data variable print out that data just to see what we actually get returned from this uh, variable here so I'm just going to say print data write that and I'm going to say Python I believe it was Python YouTube downloader it's going to go there fetches the query quite quickly we scroll up a little bit we see that the content that we have here is precisely the same content that we saw when we navigated to the web page and uh, we saw the JSON formatted content there so we can see that this starts off with the curly brace and the keys are kind, um, you know, YouTube, sorry, kind, e-tag, uh, and then inside of that there's page info, like 200 requests, results per page, things like that that we're going to be interested in actually gathering. Uh, for instance, the title, which is something that we, uh, we know we want at some point in the description, things like that. There's other pieces of information here that you might want to extract for your own purposes, but we'll kind of uh, just mention them in passing. So this is going to allow us to store that data in this data variable and treat it like a Python dictionary and then extract exactly what we want from it. So the next series of videos, we're going to be taking this uh, overview, kind of the stuff that we have so far, which is kind of base level functionality, and turning it into something a bit more modular, something that we can kind of um, wrap up, make a little bit more general, and then we'll kind of see if we can clean that up a little bit and uh, do some of the other components that we mentioned in the first part of this video series.
So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer them. If you want the code that I'll be using, that I have used in this video series, just let me know. Uh, it's in the GitHub, uh, it's GitHub link in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching, and then I will see you in the next video.